So hi, everybody, and welcome to the Writer's Bridge. It is so great to have you here for first timers. My name is Allison K. Williams. I am the author of the book Seven Drafts, Self-Edit Like a Pro from Blank Page to Book. Um, I teach webinars. I lead writing retreats. I do all kinds of fun stuff all over the internet and in real life. And it is great to be here tonight. Ashley, introduce yourself. It's been a while. Hi, everybody. I'm Ashley Renard, author of Swing. I am a former figure skating coach and choreographer turned writer and social media coach for writers. And we Fantastic. are so happy that you are here. And welcome to the Writer's Bridge. And we are all about building author platform, but we call it the Writer's Bridge because a platform is a thing you get up on and yell at people from. And a bridge is a two-way street where you talk to your readers and your readers talk to you. And it is beneficial for everybody. Um, so tonight we are going to talk about video part two, getting to content and process. We have actually taken some volunteer uh, literary essays and looked at how do we make those into video scripts. But before we just get started on that, we do have a question of the week. David Michael has asked, a friend of mine and his writing partner consistently de debut on the New York Times bestseller list for thrillers, beating Stephen oh. King, but they have fewer than 10 viewers of the book trailer video. Is it a waste of time to make a book trailer video? Yes and no. Um, so first off, know why you're making a book trailer video. A book trailer video is not really going to sell books. Um, very few people buy a book because they saw it on a book trailer. And I'm just going to ask any one of you who has ever purchased a book because the only ad you saw for it was a book trailer, go ahead and type in the chat the name of the book you purchased because I bet it's only once in your life and you will remember it vividly if you have ever bought a book from a book trailer at all. It's just not how people get their information about books. Where a book trailer helps you is, it is something to talk about on social media. It is something to talk about with your friends. It's an email that you can send to your older family members and relatives who maybe don't do social media, but they do understand, watch this 90 second video and be proud of me, grandma. It gives you something to talk about that is a little bit more oblique than, hey, I wrote a book, please buy my book. When you're doing a video, Make it yourself if you can. Learn to use iMovie or get a friend or a young person to help it. Uh, Marisa, usually book trailers show up either on Facebook or on YouTube. Sometimes people also put them on Instagram, particularly in their Instagram stories. If you if you purchase a book trailer, don't spend more than 500 bucks, like absolute max total. You are blowing out all the stops. Maybe your publisher is paying for it and it should ideally cost you a lot less. You want to make it a maximum of 90 seconds and 60 seconds is even better. So I still do a little bit of work in the entertainment industry. I watch a lot of um, audition videos from tightrope walkers and fire eaters and rope spinners and acrobats. And I got to tell you, I know in 15 seconds if this act is right for the show or not right for the show. In the first 15 seconds, I know. And I can guarantee you that no matter how beautiful and amazing and wonderful your book is, it is not as exciting as a tightrope walker over concrete. And you are not going to sustain my attention for longer than a tightrope walker over concrete does. So I really encourage you, keep it short, keep it tight, leave them wanting more. The other thing with a book trailer is it makes a lot more sense to not make it just, oh, it's like a movie trailer, but for my book. Instead, you want to make it, maybe it's an interview with you, uh, 60 seconds of fun facts I discovered when I was researching this book. Maybe it's, uh, hey, here's some additional material about the characters that I got in my historical research for my historical novel, or this is something cool about computers I had to learn for my techno thriller. Get the book in there, but make the video itself more than just an ad for the book. Ashley, what do you think? Um, I'm going to show you guys an example of a video promoting a book that has done very, very well for this author. Gabrielle Stone is a self-published author. Her memoir, Eat, Pray, FML, was published summer of 2019. She has had incredible success, like getting her book up to the top 100 on Amazon, um, may even have broken that as well, um, by 
putting videos on TikTok that tell the story of her book. So like Allison said, um, instead of just making it like a um, movie trailer, can you guys see my screen here? Um, we need to make it something that's going to be interesting um, for the audience, for the audience. And when I, um, I'm going to turn the volume right up here so you can hear it. And hopefully you'll be able to hear it's a voiceover with, I just had it here. And then I'm going to do the stop share for one second as I find it again, because when I changed the size of my screen, it jumped away. Oh, found it, found it again. Um, it is a voiceover. It's her looking at the book. You hear her voice and then you see the captions. Nineteen year old on the day I handed him divorce. This book has changed lives. Sorry, guys. Trying to. Sh First of all, I want to say thank you. Okay, I'm going to click on this again. I'm sorry. I'm trying to show it to you so that you can see the captions, <laughs> but when I'm clicking on my screen, it's jumping it's around. Marriage. I found out my husband was having an affair with a nineteen year old. On the day I handed him divorce papers, I wrote a letter mm -hmm. to my soon to be ex husband. I want to say this. Thank you. Thank you for not waiting until we had children. Thank you for being so careless that I was able to find everything. Thank you for showing me your true character after five years and not 10. Thank you for making your mother feel shame and mine feel pride. Thank you for giving me the ability to choose myself, to know that I am enough and that you did not deserve me. Thank you for showing me how strong I am because I will come out the other end of this so much stronger than before. To the 19 year old who knew he was married, I hope that one day when I have a daughter, she knows the difference between right and wrong. I will raise her to treat people with respect and to respect herself and her body. I'm so sorry that no one was capable of giving you that. But mostly, I want to say I forgive you. I forgive you for falling for the lies of the person I fell for. I forgive you for knowing that he was married. You've both shown me that I am strong, resilient, and true. I hope you can both learn to have those qualities one day. This was a tragic end to a beautiful new beginning. After two years. Okay, so her telling the main story of her memoir that is actually a section in her book from what i understand um and she's done a lot of videos in a similar vein where she's telling her story i think that that is what we have to pull people in with and so on social media we should tell our story a lot so new audience members know what it is we talk about and what it is we care about now for nonfiction, that's a little clearer um than those who write fiction but i have some fiction examples that we're going to go over later as well yeah so let's dive into our main topic this week which is video part two content and process last week we talked about when should writers use video whenever possible um sarah that was not really a quote unquote book trailer, as people say, but it's using video to sell your book, which is one of the things that we're going to really talk about tonight. Um, book trailers are often like a little movie trailer talking about the book. Um, we talked last week about types of video you can make, Instagram stories, reels, which are now the same as Instagram TV. They're no longer two separate things. Um, put them on Facebook, put them on TikTok, put them on YouTube. So what the heck do you put in these videos? Your actual writing, and Ashley's gonna show us some more about that in a moment. Tips, enhancements, information about what you've already written, stuff from your content buckets about your topics or about writing, clips maybe if you've taught a webinar, given a speech, given a reading, just a short clip of like, oh, hey, I did this cool reading at a bookstore. It's great to be out in the world again. You can put stuff about your daily life, either your life as a writer or your life as a person, because everybody wants to be your friend. Nobody wants to be your customer and literary content. And that's where we're really going to kind of dive in today is looking at how do you take a quote unquote serious literary essay, whether the tone is humorous or serious, but you know, it's you're, you're trying to show your chops, not just sell to mass media. And how do you make video content that keeps true to the spirit of your meaningful piece of writing, but also attracts viewers and lets people engage with you in a way that makes them go, oh, hey, I was flipping through TikTok and then I saw this interesting video. I like the premise of this essay. I will click through and read it, which is our ultimate goal. Ashley, you did some cool, cool stuff with scripts. 
I tried to. I sure did. Thank you, everybody, for um, your requests for me to work your content um, into video or take a look at videos you already made. Um, first, we're going to talk about Casey Walsh. So Casey, if Casey, if you're here, just unmute and say hi. I'm not sure if you're, if you're in the call. Um, Casey lost her son. We don't have Casey. Got it. Casey uh, lost her son and she writes about that. She was also orphaned as a child. So a lot of her writing centers around grief. So how do we make an interesting video about grief that's going to be supportive to an audience and make people want to keep watching? Now, we need to remember that People read because they want to feel something. We also consume video, whether we're streaming a series or scrolling through a social media app because we want to feel something, whether that's you know hope and lightheartedness. That's why I love Ted Lasso right now. I was a little late to the party, but I love it. The character development is fantastic. Um, or same reason I like Schitt's Creek, or my husband watches all of these crime type dramas that are all in subtitles okay i think all of his subtitles are hebrew right now i'm not you know he gets into this these corners of netflix that i've never been in so when we're making a video if your writing is about grief lead with the grief um lead with thing the idea i have with casey is um she shared this this thing that she didn't anticipate holding on to after her adult son died and that was the fact that he had written a bad check and so she kept getting calls from the collection agency collections agency and in the book this this is a meaningful scene of five or six pages in the book where she's receiving a call from the collection agency and the call is for her dead child here is how Ashley would turn this like meaningful five page sequence that is key to the development of this entire book and make it a video script so i would make this a series so i would call this one things they don't tell you when you lose a child part one the reason we are making this a series is because it puts you on the hook psychologically to make more it puts the idea in your brain i need to think about more things down this line you know down this um topic and then if people see any one of your videos they know they can find more of that on your profile. So this is the thing we talk about, like some people will say you have to go really niche. You have to really know who you are and what your story is going to offer to an audience, right? Um, so when people say, you know, if you can't write your elevator pitch, if you can't write your synopsis, maybe you don't really know what you're writing about yet. If you can't think of a 30 second video that'll connect with people, maybe you're not quite sure. And it's it's totally fine to be in that position, right? It's part of the process for all of us, but this would be the part one for Casey. Things they don't tell you when you lose a child, part one. If you find out after he passes that he wrote a bad check, you'll actually look forward to the calls from the collection agency because you get to hear his name spoken aloud on the voicemail. If you've lost someone you loved, what things have surprised you about the grieving process? So I have that question at the end because that's a call to action or a CTA asking right in with your voice and with the caption that you will put on the screen with the video for somebody to please interact, interact with, with my video. Yeah. Okay. And what I really like about this as well is it's got a really strong hook at the beginning, because if you have lost a child, you want to find out what somebody else is experiencing. And is it the same thing as you? I have not lost a child, thank goodness. And so for me, I'm curious, oh, well, hey, what is that experience like? You know, as a writer, I'd like to know more about it. As a person, I'm curious to know what other people are feeling. And so that appeals to an audience who is curious about what you have to say, regardless of whether they have shared your personal experience. Um, Sarah asks, what would be a way to adapt this type of video for fiction? So I have some fiction examples at the bottom. 
um, from Mark Bellow, who writes legal thrillers. Um, he also has 40 years experience as a lawyer. So we need to think about what is it about you or your life experience that makes this kind of fiction in interesting to you. Um, Jamie McGillan lives in the Pacific Northwest and she writes historical fiction about with strong female leads, uh, like the first woman who summited Mount Rainier from the 1890s. So there are all these reasons why that really floats Jamie's boat. You know, she's a teacher. She loves history. She loves the Pacific Northwest. So she really ties into a lot of those things when she's connecting with her audience and when she's supporting the community um, uh, in that area that's also interested in those things. Like um, uh, she had a parks service person on her book launch call giving away prizes, like lots of things that are really bringing in bringing that community together. Ashley, since you brought up Mark, can I read the Mark script? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best Mark here. So, hi, I'm Mark. I write legal thrillers with a social justice angle, insert title of book here, you know? And so part one, if he's building an audience with, with insight on current events. Hi, I'm Mark. I have over 40 years experience in the courtroom, which I've used in my book, thus and such. Let me tell you what happened today at the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and why you should care. Let me tell you what happened today in this big class action lawsuit and why it matters that everybody is getting a check from Hertz Rent-A-Car for a dollar and 47 cents. You know, things that we might not understand, but that the background he's using to write his fiction will engage the audience because it's also related to their life as well. Whereas Jamie does stuff that's more directly related to the actual story. And for Mark, I think it would be really, you don't have, to do anything fancy, I think what would be really great is to use a green screen behind behind him of a screenshot of a headline, a screenshot of a court sketch, something that's going on in the news. Um, we follow people on social media because we feel like we can get some information from them or encouragement, okay, or entertainment, right? Are they going to make me laugh? Are they going to make me feel less alone? Or, you know, or like Mark's situation, are they going to make me smarter when it comes to social justice? I want to be smarter. I want to be a better ally. I want to know what I don't know. Where can I go for that? Making it timely with headlines that are currently going on, I think will make people gravitate to them more, more quickly. And in the chat, Martina is talking about uh, what ties into your thing about community, Ashley. Uh, so my book is about living with HIV. I could have a video about being diagnosed, then realizing I might not actually die, then finding out I might get another life-threatening disease like COVID, but despite all the awfulness, I might find an amazing community. And that kind of counterintuitive thinking makes really nice videos. And this leads into um, the video scripts that I came up with for Brooke. Brooke wrote a captivating piece for Narratively. And um, Brooke, what was the word count for the Narratively piece? Oh, gosh. Um, about a little over 2,000. Okay, got it. it. It feels even longer than that because it grips you and it doesn't let go the whole time. Okay, Brooke was in a coma and woke up and had a man beside her who was claiming to be her boyfriend, who claimed to be her boyfriend for a very long time. And there were people around her who thought it was odd that she was there, but who thought that she sort of seemed to want him around while well, she was in the coma. So Brooke telling this story in a series of videos would be incredible. And this really ties in with Martina talking about diagnosis, her HIV diagnosis, and this is what I thought, and then this is what I thought. It brings people along. So you need to remind people at the beginning of every video, you need to introduce the idea that you were in a coma, woke up with a man beside you who was pretending to be your boyfriend. Everybody, like, that is going to grip people because there are a few things in the world that are freakier than that, right? For us to be in that vulnerable compromised state and for us not to be protected, for like, you know, the wolves to be circling while we are incapacitated. Okay, so I think you could start in a number of different ways. One way would be, have you ever had something happen to you that would be a good plot for a horror movie? I woke up from a coma and had a guy there saying he was my boyfriend, but he wasn't really my boyfriend, to be continued. Okay, then, the next part, I fell from a tree, suffered a traumatic brain injury, fell into a coma, and woke up with a man beside me, pretending to be my boyfriend. 
My mom thought it was weird, but said I seemed to want him around, you know, while I was in the coma. How long do you think it took for me to figure out he wasn't my boyfriend? Okay, and then we have the situations with your friends. They're like, you know, when you start peeling back the pieces to the story, um, and for the same reason that people like true crime, I think that they would enjoy following along because it's a story that's very hard to believe that it really happened. So um, following along with it, I think would be very popular. In the chat, Deborah asks a great question. Should we wait to do these videos until we have a book published that they can buy? Otherwise, what action are we asking for? No, you don't have to wait until you have a book published. Lily Danziger said a really great thing in a Facebook group that, uh, that I think many of you are in the other day. She said, don't think of platform, I'm paraphrasing, don't think of platform as this tedious, oh, I have to build platform to sell a book. Think about what literary community do I want to interact with? What real life community that's maybe not writers, but maybe people who share my interest, do I want to interact with? How do I want to support those people? How do I want to get to know those people? Then coincidentally, those are also the people who would like to buy your book. But what you're really doing is engaging your community, finding out what they want to read and getting excited about writing stuff for them, whether that's fiction or nonfiction. And for fiction specifically, it's not even so much about let me build interest in the subject of my book. It's let me build the connections who will like me enough to help promote my book when it comes out. Because most of your book sales are not going to come from your close friends. They're going to come from the people who are your second, third, and fourth degree connections because somebody else told them how great you were and how great your book was. Absolutely. I started making videos about intimacy and parenting um, when I wasn't really sure how my book was going to come into the world. Uh, but then when I turned around a few months later, I realized that I couldn't have set my audience up better for my memoir launch if I had tried. And then I had built a community of people who really loved my advice, loved the way I delivered it, and felt comfortable asking me questions in my DMs and happy that I would respond. So through that, built my platform on social media and my email list. I have my email list, personal email list at almost 10,000 now, and it was only 5,000 three weeks ago. I used a PDF that I followed our advice. Allison, it's amazing when we follow the advice, right? You know, teachers are good at giving advice. You mean when we actually do something like <laughs> like, like build like, a PDF that's a freebie and say, yep. hey, you guys should give me your email address to get this freebie. Yeah, like do just a free PDF. Yes, I did that. And and it's been phenomenal, phenomenal, not paid ads or anything, just the, P, the PDF. So yeah, doing this um, can even help you figure out the angle of your next essay, um, the angle of your next book, because whenever we put something out into the world, people respond to it, whether hardly anybody responds to it. And we say, okay, I need to work out my angle with that or a, the responses flood in. And then you think, okay, I just struck a nerve here. This is, this is a confirmation that writing in this way is really going to reach people. We have a great question in the chat from Jill and then Ashley, I have a question for you. So Jill asks in the chat, should you have an author platform up before you start posting on Facebook or Instagram or just start posting and build platform closer to book launch? These are not independent things. These are all things that are together. So for me, selling a book about writing craft, my platform is I write blogs for brevity. I write about travel and circus and sometimes about writing on Instagram, but I write in a way that makes people like me, which is still weird. I write stuff on Twitter that is sometimes helpful advice and sometimes just, hey, this is what I'm doing today. I post stuff on Facebook in groups where I can answer people's questions. I speak at conferences. None of these things are separate. They all flow in together. And that's how we become community, that the person you meet on Twitter becomes the person you meet on Instagram, becomes the person you maybe meet in real life at a writing conference. Jill, a lot of my... Um... A lot of my really engaged audience members now are people who I knew in my former profession of figure skating because I was a coach who was always connecting with other coaches. I networked a lot. I gave a lot of encouragement um, off season and outside the rink. Like my colleagues from all over the country knew 
if they had something they had to work out, I would listen. I would listen and, and help them make their decision or just listen to really hard um, situations they were in with parents or with the officials at US Figure Skating. Um, so really expanding that out. Some of those people um, have been my greatest ambassadors for like, oh, yeah, Ashley, Ashley has a good way of problem solving. She's good with relationships. She's, you know, so it's like what wherever we go, there we are. Um, just think what what are you known for in your group of friends? Uh, I would say family, but those dynamics are often so um, skewed that you know our we don't get to shine the brightest in um, our our bio family. Sometimes it's our our chosen family and friend groups. Think like what what is it that you are really known for there? Because putting that twist into your platform online will probably be a natural way to expand things. So Ashley, I have a logistics question here. So I finally bit the bullet and I decided, hey, I should make an Instagram reel. I have never made an Instagram reel. I've made videos and I've put them on Instagram, but I have never specifically done a reel. And I was at the butterfly sanctuary in Costa Rica and I was trying to get a photograph of a blue morpho butterfly, which are those beautiful blue butterflies when they are in flight. But when they are at rest, the camouflage on the underside of their wings makes them look like a dead leaf. And they are a terrible picture when they are at rest. They are only beautiful when they are in motion. Um, which, you know, made me think kind of philosophically about my life and there's, you know, butterfly pictures, blah, blah, blah. So I open up face Instagram and I select the reels button and I add a video and I add another video and I add another video. And then I realize, oh, some of these are out of order and I can't figure out how to reorder them. And I don't know what I'm doing now. And I'm, I'm not even as smart as your average 12 year old. And then I like spiraled into a shame spiral because I deleted everything and then started over again. And then I remembered you saying something about, well, download it to your camera and then work with it from there. And then like, I was gonna have to put captions on and I had to do this thing called pinning. And I don't even know what that is. Help me, Ashley Wan Kenobi, okay. you're my only yes. hope. Okay, so <laughs> the force, the, the reels force is strong here. Let me just say to everybody that Instagram is the most counterintuitive platform I've ever used, but somehow meta makes us just come to their products for everything, right? So um, Ashley Wan Kenobi, I like it a lot. I am going to do a little screen record here of Instagram, making an Instagram reel. Um, one thing that we want to know and remember forever and ever is if you touch something on an Instagram story or a reel and it gives you this choice about pinning it, just hit cancel, okay? Just hit cancel <laughs> because you don't want to deal with the pinning. I, I did make a tutorial that I will share on how to strategically pin things. Um, and then don't ever do it still. But if, if it says pin, you, you made a little mistake. I will show you how to um, make a little reel and caption. So here we go. All right, this is Instagram. We're tapping on it. We're going to tap on uh, our photo right in the bottom right hand corner. This takes you to your own profile. I'm going to go to the plus sign up here, top right. Now, if you have some things on your screen that look a little different, that's because Instagram um, rolls out features willy nilly, and uh, it may you may have a different version than me. We're going to tap here, and then we're going to go to real. Now, if you already have the videos that you want, oh look, all my copies of Seven Drafts over there. If you already have the videos that you want in your camera roll, right here in the bottom left, will take you to your photos. Um, on iPhoto, it's called your camera roll. So all of your, every photo and video that's on your phone will be there for you. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to take um, a video here of my fan and my crooked blinds, all right? This was not planned, there we go. I just held my finger down right here. Now, for those of you who have been looking for filters in reels. It's right here. Do you see these three stars? This little um, thingy may be on the left for you. The menu may be on the left. I flipped it to the right because I do everything on my phone with my right thumb when I'm doing reels. Having a pop socket on your phone really, really helps 
for just having control of your phone and having greater reach and comfort for your thumb. Ashley, so we're gonna, Ashley yes. what's, what is a pop socket? This is the pop. Can you guys see up um, on my video here? Don't, don't look at um, my screen share. Look up at my photo. It's just this little holder thing on the back of your phone so you can hold more comfortably. Okay. Um, we're going to tap here for filters. Um, it'll show you all of these that are trending, appearance, things like that. I like to save my one filter that I like to use right there. It's this Lindsay Lane filter. If you go to my stories and you click on Lindsay Lane filter, then you can just save it right from there. And then it will always be in your saved filters. So if you want to, if you want to use that, I really like using it for face to camera. And then we hold this down again. We're going to make more of a video. Okay, and then I take my finger off. We're going to go to preview. A video here of my fan. On my crooked preview, we are going, I tapped the little A, lowercase A in the top right-hand corner. And then we can type whatever we want for the caption. I use the little microphone at the bottom dictating captions dictating comments in facebook groups dictating text messages will save you so much time um so here we are making a caption on the writer's bridge all right perfect example i, I like raiders bridge we are going to go to all I know. of those other lesser writing groups we are going to board with hostility and commandeer their ship mm -hmm. under our writer's bridge flag there we are so that is a perfect example of what happens when you do the voice to text there are some corrections you need to make not a big deal okay a little pro tip here we are going to tap on this to choose our color whenever there are bubbles whenever there are circles like this that are blurred out or highlighted that means there's more than one screen of options on an iphone also you can tap this little dropper and then you can pick up a color from anywhere on the photo okay and you can tap here Again, we're going to make more of a video. Okay. Um, a video. All right. I just wanted my talking to stop. My I'm going to show you guys now how to put the caption at a certain part of the video. Now, if I just tap on this and try to move it, it might give me that pin. That's not what we're going to do. We are going to tap. down at the bottom of your screen do you see this here it's a little bubble and it has the first four letters of my caption so if i had multiple captions on here i would have multiple bubbles down here i'm going to tap right there and then i have a little timeline and i can pinch where in my video i want the caption to show up now starting it from the very beginning quick question so, ashley quick, quick yes. question Ash, when you say pinching, and, and I understand this is a basic, basic question, and I'm hoping I am not the only person who has this question, but are you dragging one end with your finger or are you literally pinching with two fingers? I'm not actually pinching. Thank you for clarifying. I'm dragging one end with my finger. So okay, I'll then it is just my fat, clumsy, unsocial media fingers that okay. have not been able to do this step and I'll keep trying. Okay, so here, here's the funny thing, depending what model of phone you have, sometimes when the ends are all the way to the ends, it's hard to get at the right spot to activate it so that it's live and you can pull it in. And I have that problem as well. It's just some days it's like a little bit more finicky. Um, when you pull this across, you will actually feel, you will feel a little bump on the end of your video clip. So when I am captioning my videos, I just feel for them. I feel for them, then take a look, but the feeling is a greater and easier indicator than just looking at the, looking at the frames of your video. Now I can pinch with my fingers to make this smaller or to make it bigger. You see, as I move it, 
Um, do you see how that Ashley Renard comes up there and then the sample heart and comments on the side? That's to make sure that you don't put your caption somewhere where it's not going to be readable. Okay, um, one easy mistake to make, <clears throat> I do this at least three times a day on my stories and I say fuck every time, is if you take, put your finger on this caption and then pull it down, a garbage can is going to appear. And if you put it too low, you are going to throw it in the garbage. Okay, um, see this, see the garbage can at the bottom? And I always, if I'm just going quickly, I have to throw it in the garbage three times before I remember to stop throwing it in the garbage. Okay, so I have to retype it every time. Then we'll go to done. That's, that means we're done putting that caption where it is. We can go to next. We can keep adding layers and layers of captioning here, layers and layers for your video. This down arrow is your best friend when you are just really getting annoyed with this reel or maybe you just got a little bit of footage that you want tap on the down arrow it's going to save it to your camera roll with no instagram watermark or anything and then after that is saved that's what i post to TikTok. when we go to next we're going to have a few options here first we want to choose our cover or i guarantee you're going to have a really funny face in whatever clip they choose when we click cover, then you can choose one of the frames from your video, or you can click right here and you can add any photo at all from your camera roll. And that is totally fine. That's just how it's going to look on your feed. If you make a title card on Canva or PicMonkey, you can put it on there too. And then we're going to click done. One new thing that they have added is that we can crop the profile image. So we can tap right here and then we can decide right exactly how we want it placed so that we can get the frame. We can get it all in the frame, the picture that we want and the caption. Um, once you save it as a draft, you actually can't go back and change any of the photo clips. You can change your captioning and placement, um, but you can't change photo clips. Thank you. Thank you for walking me through how the heck to do a reel. Um, Suzette had a great question in the chat, which is, does it matter if you create reels on Facebook versus Instagram, or can they get posted to both platforms? Generally, Instagram rewards what they call native content. So whenever you're going to cross post something, make it on Instagram first, save it to your phone so that you can cross post it to other platforms, or just hit the cross post button from Instagram to Facebook. Um, Brooks says, maybe I should do a series on my bizarre social media usage because of my disability. Ha ha ha. Cause I have some weird tactics. Who wants to watch the video series about cool things Brooke does to be able to use her phone with a disability. Cause like, I want to watch that. I want to know if there's any tips for me in there or if there's anything cool in there. Um, and Christina asks, will you show non Instagram and TikTok examples, for example, how to use iPhone movie? Um, we will probably go ahead and do something on iPhone movie later this year, um, but we are going to run out of time on this particular day today. Um, Eileen says she's never been able to restore a draft, so she stopped ever saving drafts. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to get to the draft because I saved the draft and then I couldn't edit the draft and then I just got frustrated and went and like ate some coconut cream to make myself feel better. So yeah, um, you can create the reel in Insta and you can save it in iPhone without posting to Insta, just use that down arrow. You can also do that for editing photos. If you wanna like edit a photo or I even use it for fast, easy graphics, set up a background in Instagram stories, type in the caption that I need for my graphic, maybe drag in a photo or a sticker, use the down arrow to save it. And then that way I can, I can use that as a photo anywhere that I'd like to use that as a photo. And that's yeah. something that will, so once you figure out how Instagram works, it works everywhere in Instagram. So in stories, if you record something in stories that you want to save for later, you press the down arrow, or you just want to be able to save it, share it somewhere else, you press um, the down arrow. Um, I always, always use captions on my reels. I do not use automatic captions because they don't always go at the correct speed. I I want people to be able to watch my videos through. So I hand type every caption for my reels um, just because I think it's a better listen, it's a better viewing experience when I am doing one cut 
and I'm speaking a couple sentences and they are in one caption and then the caption doesn't change until my, the angle of my face changes. I just think it's easier for people to follow along. Um, it takes a lot Some more of work. In my stories, I'll do auto captions because I'm posting several of those a day. Um, and those are already my more committed audience members. And I know that they're willing to follow along like that and they don't need everything hand captioned. Yeah, Allison. Some of you are going to have a caption sticker in your Instagram. It's the same place that you find like little gifts and tag your location and hashtags and stuff like that. However, not everybody has it. I had it when I was in the United States. They took it away again when I was out of the United States. And I am writing an angry editorial right now about how Instagram can provide free, easy captioning for everyone, but has chosen not to. So you may not have the captions button because Instagram may not have rolled it out in your region, or they may just not have given it to you, or they may have given it to you and taken it away again because Instagram giveth and Instagram taketh away. So randomly, this is the stickers button. When we are talking about the stickers tab or the stickers button, it is right here. Can you guys see it under that closed captioning? Yes. It is like a square smiley face. That's kind of being peeled up because it's a sticker. Okay. When we tap on that, we get a bunch of options. Okay. We can tag location. We can tag someone. If you go at, and then you put their handle or their name, that's tagging someone. Okay. Um, this is a new feature. I'm not going to speak about that today. Um, this is, you can add a question that people ask, can answer, then you can share their answers, music, poll, link. Um, oh, captions are not an option on here because I took a still photo. If I would have taken a video, then one of the options here would be captions. I could tap it and then it would, it would populate my cap captions right on the screen. As Allison said, not available internationally. Grr! The Raiders bridge needs to get on that. So Ashley, I know you subcontract some of your social media. You have an assistant. Do you have any tips for either how can we batch the work better ourselves to make it go faster? Like, are there processes you use? Or what do you have to do if you want to hire somebody else to do some of this? Yeah. Okay. So my assistant is my 21 year old niece. She's very social media savvy. Um, she had never written an email in her life till she started working for me, which I didn't know. So now she, she talks herself up and she says, Gina, it's just like an essay, Gina. It's just like an essay. Like she has to think back to, to writing essays in high school. Um, so the, the thing that she is most helpful with is batching quote cards editing videos and putting captions on videos. Now, Instagram gets very fussy. If I have her actually post anything for me, she is in Winnipeg, I am in Philadelphia. It knows there's something weird going on that I'm logging in from two countries and it really suppresses my reach. So I post everything myself. One of the fastest, niftiest things you can do giving to a, a young person is give them a bunch of screenshots of your tweets or your Amazon reviews or DMs people have sent you about your book. Just take off the name um, or and the profile picture if it's somebody, if it's a message somebody sent you so they're not identified. And they can make a whole batch of quote cards with feedback you've received about your book or the course you're teaching or the webinar that's coming up. Um, or any kind of services that you provide for them, you've provi provided for those people, um, those, are, those are really quick and easy. Even if you find tweets that are really funny or hit on your topic that you like to speak about and write about, and you save other people's tweets and screenshots, and then just do a shared album with someone who's going to, ass going to assist you, you pick a background color, you make sure your name's at the bottom, that the tweet is properly linked to whoever made it in the first place. And that's a way to make a lot of content really easily. Yeah. And generally, for those of you who have books out, anytime somebody says anything nice about your book on any media at all, copy that sucker and put it in an album so that when the excitement has died down about your book, 
five months later, six months later, hey, it's the six month anniversary of my book coming out. Here's some reviews I got back when. Here's some cool things people said, like repost them on an ongoing basis. Um, when I first got my book out in September, a lot of people said really lovely things on Facebook. Thank you. I bookmarked all of them and I will strategically repost them throughout the early part of next year so that people don't get sick to death of hearing about my book all in one go. Um, yes, everyone can now use links and that's in stories. Um, also, Mark asks, do you have to record these videos on your phone? You don't. It is a little bit easier to process everything in one device. But Instagram just made a change where you can now post from your desktop as well as from your phone. And so that is also useful and helpful. Um, and uh, oh, and Deborah asked a really great question in here. I think it was Deborah. Oh, no, it was Gail. Uh, posting photographs for Instagram stories. What's the best practice for stories engagement? Mix and match photos and videos, mostly videos, always with a call to action. Now, Ashley generally has a straight up call to action, something specifically tied in with her book, um, usually as part of most of her stories. I tend to do more here's a cool butterfly I saw. Oh, here I am in a fun looking hot tub. Oh, look, I'm on an airplane, finally. And it's a little bit more like folksy. And I get the best reactions from stuff that is like genuinely me talking like I'm talking to my genuine friends. Um, another thing that I have figured out with a client is that something that feels really good in Instagram stories and that her audience really resonates with is when there's a narrative arc throughout the day of her stories. Like, oh, you know, we moved the trampoline to its new location. Oh, it's getting windy. Oh my gosh, the trampoline is now on that side of the yard. And so people get, get kind of taken along with it. I bought a discount key fob for my vehicle and I was so happy that I spent $49 on it instead of 200 and some at a dealership and then you got to see my 14 year old trying to help me program it in my car which if any of you have done that it's like tap the brake three times turn the windshield wipers on and off open the door it's really like that's actually how you program it but we couldn't get it to work and then you know we're in the car for half an hour then i realized i didn't even put the battery in so people loved following that little saga of me being really smug i'll show you all how to do this and save all this money and then it flopping. Like yesterday, I thought I had good luck because there were ladybugs all over my window. No, I have an infestation of these, these Asian beetles um, that are not good luck. They actually bite. But then people told me that in, um, so that's when, when you, you know, when uh, the protagonist in a story is messing up and the reader can see it, but the protagonist doesn't know it yet, we can offer our audience the same sort of thing in our Instagram stories if we're documenting instead of curating or um, really creating uh, an arc for them, just to show them what you're doing yeah. in your day. Use your use your social media feed to doc to curate. Use your spontaneous social media to document how your life is going. So welcome back, everybody coming back from breakout rooms. Um, Ashley, I think we may have to post those extra scripts uh, to platforms or something like that, because I would love us to have time to get to our top tips. Yes, and, uh, I just want to say the names, uh, Kathy Kelly, Marisa Rossello, and Gail Gasper. I have um, scripts and ideas for all three of you. So I will send those to you. So before we wrap up today, we want to let you know that our next meeting will be in two weeks. We are having a special guest, which is Catherine Lewis, who is a lifetime journalist and is founding a new organization for women journalists. She's going to talk to us about pitching. How do you pitch stories to magazines? How do you get those pitches accepted? How many magazines should you expect to have to pitch before one of them goes, yes, I'll take it? You know, what is this whole process like? And she's also going to talk to us about some great story ideas as well. Um, Ashley, what are our top tips? My tip is to practice, okay? I'm a former figure skater. Allison's a former circus performer. You don't get good or comfortable at anything. I swear it's hard for me to even like something unless I'm good at it. And the only way I get better at things is by repetition, repetition. 
go back and watch the recording. I gave some advice about Instagram stories specifically when you guys were in the breakout rooms and Iabelle's eyes got really big when I told her how many, how often she should be on stories and why. But I want you guys to go back and watch that because it is the practice that then makes you feel more comfortable. Just like you wouldn't say, I'm not writing until I get a piece accepted for modern love. No, you better practice if you ever want that to happen. Okay, same thing with video. And I wanna to add to, to that, my top tip is lower the stakes. Your video does not have to be the prettiest, best produced, most well-synced, well-captioned video ever made. It just needs to be something up there talking to the people who you want to share your writing with. So share away. Thank you all so much for joining us. We will see you again in two weeks. Go ahead and unmute yourselves for a lovely goodbye. Thanks for coming to the Writer's Bridge. Hi, thanks, thanks a lot. Bye. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. We love you. <laughs> you, guys, you guys don't want me to sing again, do you? <laughs>